Welcome, friends, to this virtual community broadcast of Armstrong Chapel. I'm Lead Pastor David Brown, and we're excited that in this season of Lent, we'll be surprised by hope. A study written by N.T. Wright. Resources are available to you online through Right Now Media. Contact the office, we'll send you a free subscription, and you can watch the videos of each week highlighting the elements of resurrection and hope and promise that all of us believe as Christians who follow Jesus Christ. Let's engage in this Lenten study together and be blessed as God comes among us.
Okay. I'll give you two. morning. Welcome to this gathering at Armstrong Chapel, both in presence and with one another in person, but also with those that are part of our virtual community that are sharing in our live stream or in the recorded broadcast. We rejoice that our risen Savior is among us this day. There is a traditional greeting that is often shared at this gathering of Christians in worship. 
your response to the greeting is, Christ is risen indeed. Are you ready? Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. I trust and pray our risen Lord helps us in our celebration to rejoice and to praise God together. As we begin this morning in our time of worship, I want to call your attention to several of the announcements, several of our special friends who are with us this morning in our worship as our musicians, and also those that are helping us in preparations for our Easter egg hunt that happens at 1130. No, we're not going outside. It will be indoors today. And Diana's quickly adapting in creative and wonderful ways. Three different spaces. That's to come. Don't worry, but we are gathering at 1130 to share in that celebration. So be a part of that. Come and share together. There are some items uh, as the days of old uh, that you'll remember from the pandemic. They're all wrapped, but they're down on the hospitality table so that others aren't touching your food. Come and share in a festive little conversation following this service and hang around for the 1130 egg hunt. We love for you to participate in that. Please notice as well, there are several upcoming events. Uh, friends, specifically the men gathering today, there is a very special gift that will be given to you as you leave this morning. Now, I know some of you may not be big golfing fans, but you may still want to take that towel gift that they're presenting today. Utopia, the seven days of Utopia, is a movie that we'll be sharing at the Supercharge event. And while its background is about golf, it's nothing about golf at all, but our walk and uh, sharing of a faith-transformed life. And you'll want to try and remember that, be a part of that. And so that towel has some reminder dates on it for you. It also will help you remember that if you are a golfer, you might register for the upcoming summer golf outing that happens here with Armstrong Chapel. And we'd love to have your foursome and others gather together in that special event. And so if you'll note again, take the towel, even if you're not a golfer, because I hear you can wipe down the car or other things with it, and you don't have to take up golf, but you'll remember the dates and help us spread that word. You may also want to note, ladies, you've got a special date coming in April, and the announcements in our program this morning, as well as at our website, about the tune and blooms happening down at the Cincinnati Zoo. Our women's outing will be a part of that evening's festivity. You want to see more information or learn more about it, Miss Diana can easily help you with that, or you can contact the church office. There are a host of other announcements in your program this morning. If you got in this morning without a Connect card to record your attendance, don't panic. Take out your smartphone and scan it on the QR code and record your attendance electronically, and you don't even have to fill out a card. There's also ways that you can give electronically if you'd like to share in the offerings at Armstrong Chapel. You can do that online as well. We encourage you to offer prayer requests there so that we too might be in partnership with one another and praying and caring for the community of faith. As we share together and we begin now this morning, I'm going to invite you to stand and join with us after the choral anthem. Yes. Yeah. 
that yet. Good morning. Good morning. Amen. Please join me in the call to worship this morning. Where shattered hearts are made whole, where wounded souls are healed, where life is stronger than death. Where the lonely become our friends, where a stranger is welcomed home, where hope is stronger than despair. There we find Jesus. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Alleluia. Christ be with us. Please remain standing as we join together and declare our faith in the resurrection and reign of Christ. By God's mighty power, God raised from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ and seated him at the right hand in heaven, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every title that can be given, not only in the present age, but also in the age to come. God placed all things under his feet and appointed Christ to be head over everything for the church, for his body, the fullness of him fills everything, everywhere and always. Amen. The first scripture reading this morning is from Mark, chapter 16. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Miss Diana and her helper, Benny, have a special message. If you want to come join them, come down this morning. We want to see some of your pretty Easter outfits, too. So come on down. Oh. Good morning. Put that back in there, please. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. How are you guys? Are you good? This is such an exciting day. This is one of my favorite days. Well, the Easter bunny and, and the Easter lamb are, that, that's fun stuff, right? But you're totally correct. It's not about the Easter bunny. It's about Jesus and that he is raised from the dead. He is back. He is alive. Isn't that so cool? So do you, any of you guys, are you, any of you staying for the Easter egg hunt? Or you've had Easter egg hunts? I did one last time. You did? Cool. 
They glowed in the dark. So it was an outside Easter egg hunt? How fun. Maybe next year. Yeah. <laughs> it was? Well, we're going to have an Easter egg hunt, but I have a question for you. What in the world do eggs have to do with Easter? You don't know? What do you think? Wait, wait. wait. Hey, guys, Riley knows. Hiding them? Riley, what do you think? Oh, come here. They've got to hear this out there. Did you hear that? Probably not, but she's doing the next children's moment, I'm telling you. Um, so it's all about the tomb. And it looks like the rock. She said it looks like the rock that was in front of the tomb. And eggs also, I'm going to add to that, that eggs also represent new life because that's where chicks come from. So I've got some eggs that when you leave, I'm going to pass out to you. But I want to read to you a little story that's inside my egg because do you hear it? We'll see. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Hold on. This is so exciting. Oh, that's okay. We'll see what happens at the end of service. So listen to this. This is called the jelly bean prayer. Does anybody like jelly beans? So. You did. Mr. Benny, I'm going to have you help me. If you can hold up the jelly bean color when I read it and show them the jelly beans. So let's hear what the jelly beans mean. Oh, yeah, there will be a few jelly beans. So it says, a bag full of jelly beans so colorful and sweet is a prayer and a promise and a loved one's treat. Red is for the blood he gave. Green is for the grass he made. What's going on over there? <laughs> Yellow. Yellow is for the sun so bright. Really? Oh, you wouldn't do that, right? Okay. Hold on, hold on. There's another one. Orange is for the edge of night. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Black is for the sins that we made. He's not eating it. Okay. Here's two more. We've got two more. Purple is for the hour of sorrow. And pink is for a new tomorrow. That, Benny, that's okay. You know what? You guys are going to get to eat one, too. So you don't like children? You can share them. You can share the prayer. Good. Good. You know what we're going to do right now? Hold on. Hold on. No, there's no toys inside those. But what we're going to do right now, put that back. Thank you. Um, what we're going to do right now is we're going to pray, and you guys actually get to stay up here with your moms and dads today and worship in our Easter service. And then I will see you at 1130 for our Easter egg hunt, which I need to let you know that our preschoolers will be doing their Easter egg hunt in the Children's Center. And elementary will actually be back up in here in the worship center. We're going to transport them some things. So will you guys fold your hands and bow your heads and pray with me? Dear Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for our family and our friends, and we thank you for the gift that you give us in Jesus. It's in his precious name we pray. Amen. Okay, go back to your seat.
through the rest of this service, there'll be nothing like the sound of children to remind us of that new life in Jesus Christ. As we share together in our prayer requests this morning, there are a few that are given for us today. If you'll remember with me the family of Reverend Gene Wells, former pastor at St. Paul's United Methodist Church several years ago, came back in retirement to join his son David and has been serving there in his retirement. He passed away on Tuesday and there are special services being planned and you'll just want to surround the St. Paul's community and their family in our prayers today. We want to continue to remember our GVCM uh, group within Haiti. Haiti is not only seeing the unrest of political violence, but the greater challenge is the restriction of food and the food insecurity because they cannot arrive through the main entry port at Port of Prince. So pray with me for that nation and people and for the deliverance around food and that need. Shannon has tests on Tuesday and will require our prayerful support for that. Miss Ella celebrated her 95th birthday yesterday and we rejoiced with her. Pat as well had a gathering for an upcoming 90th birthday soon in April. We want to remember those, especially the losses of life in the Baltimore Bridge collapse. We want to lift up in our hearts and prayers Jordan, who was cradled into the arms of Christ Jesus, our Savior, early in the morning around 2.30 on Good Friday. It's heartache for Jay and Jill and her sister Jenna, and yet it's a relief from that pain and suffering that her battle with cancer had brought, and yet she is victorious because of our risen Savior. If you'll remember with me, those that are suffering from sundowners' condition and our need to pray for them, pray for those that are awaiting test results, the hospitalizations uh, due to an eye condition we were asked to pray for, as well as Kashina's continued recovery from successful surgery this past week. Continue to lift up your prayers, record them on your Connect card, or again, those who are online, record them at the site on uh, both our web page as well as in this worship resource that we might pray for one another and lift them up before the Lord. Let us go to God now in prayer. God, we were blind, but now you open our eyes to see your glory revealed through your Son, Jesus Christ, who died and rose again to lead us into life. God, we were deaf, but now you unstop our ears to hear the power of your resurrection story. For once we were dead, but now in Christ we are alive. God, we were unable to speak, but you set free our tongues to rejoice and sing with all the hosts of heaven. Holy, holy, holy is the one who transfigures our world with the spirit of life. Holy, holy, holy is the one who redeems and makes all creation. Holy, holy, holy is the one in whose light we see that heaven and earth will be made new. As we come to the empty tomb, hear us as we pray as Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
of you may have received in the mail or picked up at our station at the back an Easter offering envelope. All those offerings here in tradition at Armstrong Chapel go to build our community partnerships. They are gifts given by you that we share with our neighbors and our brothers and sisters around the globe, offering the hope and victory of our Savior, Jesus Christ. If you didn't come prepared to share that gift today, take the envelope home and return it back on a future Sunday. Share those gifts or mark on your offering the Easter offering that we might be sure that all of those gifts go in our work to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ, to extend the power and victory over sin and death, and to offer new life because of Jesus Christ our Lord. Thank you in advance for your generous and gracious support.
The second scripture reading today is from the 118th chapter of Psalm. Open to me the gates of righteousness that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. The word of God for the people of God. Will you pray with me? So engage now our hearts and lives in the word of truth that we might hear and believe your creative and redeeming power and that we might know the risen Savior among us and share with great thanksgiving the promise of a day that you have made that we might rejoice and be glad in it. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Before I get going too far, it's important that we as United Methodists acknowledge our musical heritage and history. It is Charles Wesley's opening hymn, Christ the Lord is Risen Today, that sets the stage for any gathering of Christian people on Easter. But the helpful work of these musicians and this chancel choir, will you express gratitude? <laughs> ben brought most of them over to sing the Hallelujah Chorus in the Little Chapel, and I think there's still a roof. I'm not sure. <laughs> but we'll see after the rain if it leaks. Just saying, Ben. That's an amazing time. You'll get a chance to sing with them the Hallelujah Chorus at the end. I'm going to disappear and go on to our contemporary worship service. But you'll be led at the end by our associate pastor, Pastor Sarah O'Connor, and this chancel choir. They're going to help you sing the Hallelujah Chorus and be able to share in the joy of our risen Savior. You might note that the opening scripture was from Mark's Gospel, a remarkable gospel that if you brought your Bibles with you and you look closely, some most would find a little footnote at the end of verses 1 through 8 that suggests this is where the gospel story ends. And we say, it's remarkable. How could it end there? Because the women in fear and trembling leave the tomb and say nothing to anyone for fear and trembling. How then is the gospel told? How do you and I know the Savior is risen? It isn't by the word of the women that were at the tomb. It's not because of the apostles and Peter who go before him. It is because the risen Christ goes before all of us and is with us even as we gather for worship. Some of you might remember a hymn that we sing at Christmas time, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. That hymn sets the stage that God is born among us. God is with us. Emmanuel, the word God is with us. The ending chorus resounds, Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel is come, O people of Israel. You and I are in that same frame to rejoice this day as a people who understand rejoicing, joy in the heart of that word, the root of rejoicing, 
joy, not an emotion that's of happiness and glee and ecstasy, the laughter of children voices and the chagrin of parents who can't control no it's not that at all it's rejoice joy that is steadfast in constant even in suffering and in tribulation even in hardship and affliction god is still saving among us it is that greeting that often with Jesus, he comes and shares in that hope of rejoicing. Salvation born among us, given to us as God's perfect gift. Rejoicing as well as an acknowledgement of the people gathered for worship. Rejoicing was in that word that Jane read for us out of the psalmist where we enter the gates with thanksgiving and praise. Jerusalem itself had at uh, least 12 major gates, one for each of the 12 tribes of Israel and other minor gates around the city. And yet the psalmist prayed that through those gates we might enter and to worship and praise. And the early centuries of the life of Israel found them entering to offer praise and worship at the temple complex. That temple complex you and I would be familiar with today, that it was destroyed in 70 AD as the city was laid siege by the Roman Empire and the temple itself was destroyed to mock God and to say that the God of Jerusalem could not protect the people. That same city still stands with the western wall of the Temple Mount where faithful Orthodox Jews gather to offer prayers to God and to hope someday that the temple complex might be rebuilt so that they could offer sacrifice of rejoicing and praise back to God. That model of sacrifice that is throughout the Old Testament story. That sacrifice which first found itself within the Genesis account between Cain and Abel. And yet over the bickering and jealousy of the offerings to God, one of the brothers would die. Abraham would be bound after receiving a son long into his elder years. God would say, offer that son Isaac back to me. And yet God, at that mountaintop experience, before Abraham offered Isaac back to God, stopped his hand and provided a ram that God's rejoicing might be true. You and I, this day as we approach the gathering of God's people, come rejoicing not because of a sacrifice that we can offer or a gift that we can share, but again, it is the outpouring of God's Spirit that once in previous day gave the gift of Jesus Christ as a perfect sacrifice. Pastor Sarah led us on Thursday, Monday, Thursday, the upper room scene in a beautiful liturgy around the four cups and the Seder meal. And yet one of the symbols of that meal she shared, and for me it was one of those new learning moments, for on the Seder plate is an egg. And that egg is taken off of the plate and is raised over a lit candle. And you watch the smoke come around the egg, acknowledging the sacrifice offered at the temple. The praise and the gift of that charred egg, marked by smoke and covering, is returned back to the Seder plate to remind us that we too might offer that sacrifice of praise back to God. And yet Jesus becomes for us the perfect sacrifice that takes away the sins of all the world, that sets us right with God and with one another when we live out the faithfulness of His rejoicing, of His joy, 
of his life among us. The writer of Hebrews in 12.2 would say, For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning his shame. So we, as the other writers of the New Testament, would proclaim that Jesus rejected has become the head of the cornerstone. That this is the day that God has made. We'll rejoice and be glad in it. We will, as Paul wrote to the Philippians, rejoice in the Lord always. Again I say rejoice. And again Paul in 1 Thessalonians says rejoice always. But maybe even greater is that testimony that Paul writes to the church in Rome and to us gathered here that nothing would be able to separate us, not death, nor life, not angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. To you this day I say, rejoice, for this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. The only problem with being in this choir that we can't see what you see, right? We can't see what they're doing down here, and we wish we could. Uh, it's kind of a tradition here that we invite you up now to sing one of the great choral pieces uh, that's ever been written. Um, we have copies of music for you on both sides, and uh, Megan, if you can grab those off the organ. Sopranos are over here, altos are over here, tenors are on this side, basses are over there. So don't just be sitting there. I want to see something. How many of you maybe when you were in high school, sang the hallelujah chorus in your choirs. Raise your hand. Oh, come on, there's more than that. Some of you are lying, right? Well, you only need to know really one word, okay? Just, it's, 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 it's that simple, okay? So don't be shy and just come up the side aisles and come up here. Come on, come now, come now. So as you're, as you're coming up, just, um, it's just the teacher in me. Handel wrote this piece in 1741, and it was first performed in 1742. Just come up the side, yeah, through these side doors, and come on up. Come on, more people than that. We need help. But he wrote the piece in 1741, and it was first performed in Dublin, Ireland in 1742. And King George II was there. And somewhere in the middle of the singing of the Hallelujah Chorus, he was so enthralled by what he was hearing that they said he jumped up out of the seat, and when he stood up, everybody else stood with him. So it's, there's no historical proof of any of this, but it makes for a great story. So if you feel so inclined to stand during uh, the singing of this, please feel free to do it, and if you want to stay seated, you can do that as well. Just let your heart lead you in either direction.
Since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has any power over him. The life he lives, he lives to God. Alleluia. And now may the God of peace, who raised from the dead our Lord Jesus, provide us with every good thing we need in order to do God's will. And the blessing of Almighty God, Creator, Redeemer, and Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forever. Amen. Thank you. 